Hello friend, welcome back to Toyota Maintenance YouTube channel. Yesterday I made video for you which I believe I called Timing Belt Failure on this 2008 Toyota 4Runner with 200,000 miles on the odometer. And I walked you through the whole thing, I explained everything, almost everything. And what we discovered, there was a coolant leak after only one month. And we discovered, of course, it was the last part, which I had to remove absolutely everything, including the water pump. And it was the small rubber o-ring, which is on this coolant pipe. And it's right here. So there is supposed to be in that groove rubber o-ring. There is also another one here, when you install everything. That little thing was shredded in the pieces and it was basically puking the coolant. I loved all your comments underneath the video. Last time I checked, in like 24 hours there was like 150 comments. I read all of them as usually. I had no chance to answer anything. I was stuck whole day here on one of my last two barrows. Oops, I might spoil some news. That was a nightmare, valve cover gaskets, but do it on that Boxer 2010 Outback. Oh yeah, I, I don't wish you to work on that, but forget about it. Let's talk about this failure, this coolant. So one question was, oh, how come I didn't use the OEM parts. How come I was showing aftermarket parts? Well, this whole thing, it's kind of problematic. So, of course, I got seven days ahead. I purchased entire Toyota OEM parts online. And of course, when on Monday car show up, the parts were nowhere to find. So, not to lose the customer, because I cannot reschedule when I have everything scheduled for two weeks ahead. I just bought it locally from the supplier. It was an aftermarket set and I was really not happy about it. I actually have that whole set. Yep, it's right here. In this box, there's OEM Toyota parts for this engine for that job. So hopefully that answers that question, why not OEM? It just didn't come. It was within California from the seller. And it was, I believe, nine days it took instead of two days, right? It's a COVID, so it was a nightmare. So that was a nightmare from beginning. So now I have it back, wasting a lot of time with it, making sure we take care of the customer as fast as possible and it's time to install the new water pump. So here is the brand new unit. I hope you can nicely see it. Is it good? Yeah. So that's a big baby. And the problem, right, the design problem, it's right here. This is the tube I was just showing you, which needs to be slowly, carefully pushed in. And you don't want to roll that o-ring on that pipe I just showed you. Roll it backwards, pinch it, cut it or something like that. Now, how are you supposed to install it? This whole kit comes with the paperwork. One is solely interested about the timing belt and tensioner and everything. But they also give the water pump manual. As you can imagine, they are not aware of this issue. They are not even mentioning these O-rings in this paperwork whatsoever. So we can forget about that. Now what's about the Toyota repair manual? You know I keep promoting the OEM parts. Ideally, if it's fitting the reasonability, the price, here is the install water pump. 
So I always do follow these things and I will read it to you. Install a new o-ring to the water bypass, bypass pipe end. And now it comes. What is huge discussion on yesterday's video. Apply soapy water to the o-ring. So I disclosed with you that following all this OEM stuff and the procedures I learned at the dealer, I did the same. I was always using on this application and this is first fail actually. I did many of these, trust me. This is a first fail and I always use the liquid hand soap and you lubricate this inlet in the water pump. You lubricate that o-ring when it's on that pipe and that allows you carefully slide it on it. But this is the first time it failed. Now many of you said, hey, don't do that. Use a silicone. So today we have this aftermarket Sil Glide, which is compatible with rubber o-rings or super loop which one you think i should use both are silicon lubricants and they will not damage that rubber o-ring you cannot just put whatever you want there because it might actually damage it and it will be bad it will probably also last only a couple of months and then it will be gone so let's say we will use this for a change this time and we will see we will cross fingers we will install it correctly what do you say few of you also in the comments said oh i always use toyota o-ring lubricant well i work for a dealer never heard of it never saw it so i don't know if it's something new if you have any item number for it please share it in the comments I have no idea how it looks like where you get it and I will gladly buy that and keep showing it in the future videos now this job was done just months ago months and few days ago so I don't have to spend all the time cleaning the surface where the new gasket comes I just prepared it it was very easy there was nothing basically to scrape off but we have to focus on this weak spot applying correctly this o-ring here and the lubricant to it so let's go together in this video and successfully i'm i know you're crossing your fingers for me successfully install this bugger if you will be doing your own after 100,000 miles you will probably need to use the scraper like this this is a blue point or something like that you will need to clean those surfaces to prepare it for the new gasket in my case I use this scrubbing pad because there was really nothing left after the months so I just cleaned it you know nicely around and that in my opinion it's perfect I hope you can nicely see there's enough light and it's in focus so it's kind of metal multi-layer I see at least three layers of metal is also rubber so in this case you don't have to do any FIPG or build up any gaskets this is all taken care of so this is pretty cool I like that all you have to just figure out how it fits on it there are two studs involved one is here and one is there so I will carefully put it on them and start packing it on that block that engine block We'll recheck that all the holes are perfectly aligned and this will be successful. But I know you are you are there. I'm not alone. Somebody said, yeah, 
It's good, Peter. You are not alone. We are with you. So here we have that prepared for the new water pump. Now comes that dilemma. Shall I use the ga uh, the or O-rings, rubber O-rings supplied by this kit or not? Look at on this one. This is the large one and it's beautiful and smooth. I don't have any problem touching it, feeling it. I don't feel bad about it. But this is the brand new small one which goes on that pipe. Look at these imperfections on that surface. Do you see that? I can't believe it. This is probably unusable despite the fact if I will use something else then I will have no warranty but do you see that that's probably bad somebody's probably putting in this kit bad o-ring that's absolutely insane when you really start looking on those details do you see that chunk there Wow, maybe that's why it failed. The small ones are not a good quality. It almost feels like I should take the old one which I removed from it because it doesn't have those imperfections on that outer diameter. I don't see it on it and it's still very soft. Okay, so I will start with installing this o-ring on this pipe. And I have it nicely in the place. Hopefully you can see it. So let's continue with this install. And now comes the change which we decided for together. I'm netting this, making sure it's nicely mixed, but it should be. And I will go with your guys' recommendation. And I will use this time a silicone. It's a super loop multi purpose synthetic grease. It's a synthetic silicone grease. It's compatible with the rubber o rings. And here I'm going to do the same. This is where it's coming in. Once again, I'm feeling it if there's no sharp edge, but it feels perfect, this part. So I will again loop this entry because we don't want to have a problem with that o-ring so how much is enough for this so little I think so I'm not trying to save it but that should be it so that entry needs to be nicely slippery so that o-ring can nicely get inside. Now I have to put you on the side because I need space for myself. Everything here is clean. I don't have any debris on the surfaces. As I mentioned before, there are two studs which actually guide that install. One of them is here. And where is the other one? Right there. So you just align it. Do I have it in? Oh yeah. And you just carefully without pinching any wire here. I have and so on. Right? You are just going towards to the block of the engine. And now comes the scary part right here. Pushing that pipe inside of the water pump oh that went so easily that's a huge improvement because of you guys well thank you the soapy water was not so easy like this one there's no way you will remember day later what bolt was where so you nicely put them in the order as removed that all goes around these are the top two studs and it goes 
on the bottom and around. So, so there are two additional studs which regarding my scheme are coming right here. I will be doing everything hand tight. Only after that we will start torquing. So, and every single manual will tell you you will be using the crisscross pattern. So these are all 12 millimeters. So you try to keep crossing. Now that factory repair manual tells me that the bolts are 21 newton meters and the stud bolts and the nut are 18 newton meters. After it's really seated, you always try if there's no play on this part. It's nice and solid. It was a breeze to use that silicone that really nicely went there. And you bet I will use on this thermostat housing on that other o-ring. I will use that silicone too. It will be wonderful. And we will be never redoing this job ever again. I know that. And now it just continues with the timing belt and its components and putting everything, the pieces of puzzle, nicely carefully together so it will perfectly work in the future. I thank you for all your feedback, comments, tips. As you can see, I changed my way to install that. I'm using your tricks and please Make sure you are subscribed. I will film a lot of for you in my garage here in the future. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tips. And I will see you in next video. Have a good one, my friend.